Okay, great, thank you. Um, there are a few um, questions about, John, about having IgA nephropathy and other symptoms. So things like, can IgA nephropathy flare up, cause a temperature? And does IgA nephropathy have any effect on your joints? I'll kind of link them both together because I thought they might. So traditionally, we regard IgA nephropathy as just a kidney-limited disease, so not associated with other symptoms. Um, when your kidney function gets worse, you will start developing the general symptoms of kidney failure, and they, there are lots of different symptoms there. But if you have preserved kidney function, so normal kidney function, by and large, we don't expect the IgA nephropathy to cause any other symptoms in relation to arthritis or other symptoms. One of the things we did pick up when we looked at the communications on Facebook and something that I've certainly experienced in my practice is patients noticing that occasionally they get pain in their kidney area and it can be associated with peeing blood or peeing Coca-Cola colored blood. It can happen at the time you've got a, a cough or a cold. And that seems to be very, very commonly uh, described. Uh, but very poorly understood. And so I think, you know, one of the things we're interested in is looking at that. Um, and we're going to think about doing a, a project to look at whether the kidneys do swell during certain times, particularly times of infection, um, and whether that is a true cause of kidney pain. But I know a lot of patients have mentioned this to their nephrologists, and it's been discounted because everyone tells them kidneys don't cause pain. So, so that's something we need to look at. I think from an IgA vasculitis point of view or HSP, you can get pain, pain in your joints, you can get pain in other parts of the body. Um, and certainly one of the things we did on the Facebook group was when I sh someone was talking about a rash, so I put a couple of pictures up of the rash associated with HSP and people with IgA nephropathy said, oh, I had that rash, but I never quite linked the two together. Um, and so it may be that there are some people who are having some symptoms related to HSP, but have a label of IgA nephropathy. Um, we have an expert on IgA vasculitis, Louise, who I'm sure would like to comment on this in terms of the other symptoms, if you actually have HSP, but, and I'll let Louise comment on that, if I can unmute her in time. So let me just have a go. Yeah, thanks for including me. Um, I think it's interesting that you've noticed in the adults that there is this fluctuation because it is something that we see in the children. Um, and perhaps children with the rash presents um, to A&E or GP because it does look sometimes a bit like a meningococcal type rash in that it won't blanch away under a glass. Um, usually we see with joint problems with the IJ vasculitis that usually the rash is there when there's a flare of the tummy or the joints. So I think if the joint pains are happening and there isn't a rash and you happen to have IgA nephropathy, then it might not be that you've got IgA vasculitis. So I think the rash is the big signal really for IgA vasculitis and it, it, it is a rash that doesn't blanch away under a glass if you did the glass test. And most people are familiar with the glass test because of meningitis awareness. Um, so that's what I would say really, if, if you're not getting a rash and have never got a rash, um, with joint problems and your kidney functions okay, then it might be worth um, seeing your doctor to discuss your joints um, because they might be separate to the IgA nephropathy. But if you are finding that you do get some of this rash, um, which is usually on the lower limbs, so on your ankles or on your feet, um, then, then it might be that aches and pains are related to that. And usually we would see that that would get better when the rash gets better. Um, and that, that's the general rule that 